Welcome to Cambridge. It's the 1st of June and it's a lovely sunny morning. The temperature is 26 and a half degrees. The roof screen is down and the fogging machine has been pumping out fog. Anyway, that's enough about the weather. I wanted to show you several of the beautifully scented orchids that I've got in flower at the moment. This is Lycaste aromatica. Um, I've actually got two slightly different clones and one flowers slightly before the other. This um, clone has a few little tiny delicate spots um, in the lower petals and this one is almost a clear yellow. Now this is a wonderful orchid because it has a really distinctive cinnamon scent. Anybody that you give this one to to smell instantly says cinnamon, which is fantastic. And it's very free flowering. There are, I mean, admittedly, this has quite a lot of flowers, but you do see um, examples on the internet that have masses more flowers. But this is about as good as I normally do. Over the winter, it stays completely dry. And sometimes if you see um, specimens of this, the pseudo bulbs are really quite shriveled where it hasn't had any moisture over the winter at all. In here, it's kept um, just slightly damp, so I quite like to see pseudo bulbs that are still quite plump when it comes to flowering. And the flowers and the new growths appear at the same time. The other thing to say about it is that apart from the dry winter rest, um, during the summer uh, they take masses of water and like to be kept really moist. This is actually potted in quite a large plastic pot and it's a mixture of bark, perlite and quite a lot of sphagnum moss to retain the moisture. I'm going to actually repot this uh, when it's finished flowering and separate the two clones and the one that's the most vigorous um, I shall probably put, um, divide into two. One interesting point about this is unusually amongst orchids the tops of the pseudo bulbs when the leaves have dropped, are left with two really vicious um, spikes, sort of almost like thorns. And if you go to grab one of the pots of these um, without paying attention, they can really puncture the skin, really painful. One of the first orchids that I collected um, when I started growing a lot of orchids was this Sologeny. Sologeny ochracea uh, because it has a beautiful, sweet, really sweet scent and really quite powerful. It's sort of you can smell it for quite a way away. And it's cool growing, so it suits this um, greenhouse very well. In the winter, you keep it just a little bit on the dry side, although if you let it get too dry for too long, the pseudo bulbs. Um, become quite shriveled, which I think is quite unsightly, although they still flower well. Um, and then after it's flowered, the new growths develop on the outside of where the flowers have come, a pair of two new leaves. It's a bit unnerving at first because it takes quite a long time for the new roots to develop and get into the compost and start plumping up the old um, pseudo bulbs, which by then have got a bit more shriveled. But it's a very easy orchid to grow. Um, this is actually the white version. Well, it's actually called um, Acrasia limoniana because unlike the species, it has just very pale lemony yellow markings, which is very beautiful. And um, I'm, I'm reasonably pleased with this one, but one of the um, problems that this particular Sologeny has is if it gets a little bit too hot and dry, you do get a bit of die back from the tips of the leaves. And you quite often see that on, if you see, go to the shows, at least in this country, you quite often see the same thing has happened to many other people's. But this one isn't too bad. I tried to make a point of keeping it cool, shaded um, last year, and most of the leaves have maintained their color quite well. And um, just for the sake of completeness, this is the uh, more normal version of uh, Sologeny acrasia that you'll come across with um, more distinct um, yellow and gold markings. 
Generally speaking, I find that the straight species is smaller grain than the Limaniana version. I must admit I hesitated to show you this one because the leaf tips on this particular plant are much worse than on the other one because I think last year I must have um, let it get to a bit too warm, a bit too dry um, and it suffered as a result. But um, this year I'm hoping to get um, some much better growth on it and so that by next spring it will have a much better crop of um, uh, leaves on it altogether. I do hate it when you have unsightly foliage on an orchid. The third really highly scented orchid species that I wanted to show you today is Odontogrossum leaf. It doesn't crop up very often on the internet and the reason I've got this is that I used to go up to store holders at orchid shows um, when I was particularly building up the collection. Um, and you know, I've, you know that I'm really interested in orchid scents. And I used to say, which of your orchids smell really good? And this is a result of one of those that was um, uh, suggested to me. It comes from Mexico, high up in the mountains. Um, so it comes from really cool, even cold um, growing conditions. It took me a long time to get this to um, develop you can just about see that um, such a long flower spike, it's quite difficult to manage. You can just about see the progression of pseudo bulbs. The last one you can see is um, really quite a decent size. It's just about now got to, it's getting caught up. It's now just about got to the size that um, it should be with a oh, over a meter long arching spray of flowers. Uh, the first couple of years, the flower spikes weren't nearly as large as this. Um, and really, I should have started filming this last month because this has been out for six weeks already and smelling really strongly all the time, at least when it's warm weather. The flowers are incredibly long-lasting. Um, they're quite subtle, I must admit, not um, showy in the way that a lot of orchids are. But it's an incredibly um, uh, floriferous and um, beautifully scented species. My ability to describe scents, unfortunately, isn't matched by my enthusiasm for growing scented orchids. But in this case, I worked out just recently, uh, because we've got lots of lily of the valley growing in the garden, that for want of a better description, this smells of lily of the valley which means that it's quite a sort of, it's not what you would call a perfume, but it's an interesting, um, well, quite delightful scent. Anyway, so that's Odontoglossum leaf. Normally I like to let um, orchid spikes more or less do what they want to do, but this is such a large spike that I've had to tie it up to a thin bamboo cane. Now, just before um, I go, I thought I might as well show you this orchid. It's um, quite obviously a Cattleya type of orchid. Um, sadly, I don't know what it is because um, the very kind member of our local orchid society who gave it to me didn't know. But she knew that I was mad keen on scented orchids and thought I should have this. And it really is a lovely, um, what I would call a real perfume unlike some of the more interesting scents that you get in orchids. This is a real classic sort of highly perfumed orchid. So without knowing the actual name, what can I say that's useful about it? It lives up here where it gets plenty of light. You can see that the foliage is quite a sort of pale green, which is correct for this sort of orchid. Um, I tie in the new growths as they occur so that it produces a more compact plant which is important if you're growing them indoors. Um, it's very worthwhile looking up another um, very successful YouTuber called Ed's Orchids. He grows quite a lot of cattleyas and he's done quite a lot of videos on this technique of wiring or tying in the new growths as they occur. So that when they grow they are set 
in a, in a particular place and form a compact plant. Um, anyway, it's uh, such a, mm, it's really, it really smells wonderful. Um, that's about all for today. So thank you very much for watching and see you in the next one.